For decades, engineers have been fascinated with the concept of vertical takeoff and landing planes, aiming to combine the advantages of helicopters and planes. While helicopters excel at vertical flight, they are limited in terms of speed and range compared to traditional fixed-wing aircraft. The search for a vertical takeoff and landing plane capabilities has resulted in the development of weird aircraft designs. From massive cargo lifting VTOL planes to high supersonic VTOL jets, here are the top 10 vertical takeoff and landing planes ever made in the world. Yakov Lev Yak 38. The Yakov Lev Yak 38 was a remarkable Soviet aircraft that could take off and land vertically. Its purpose was to serve as a carrier based aircraft specifically designed for the Soviet Navy's Kiev class aircraft carriers. This innovative aircraft provided the Soviet Navy with a way to operate from carriers without relying on traditional runways. It was equipped with a single turbojet engine with two additional engines in the front section of its fuselage. These engines, with a slightly lower thrust of 6,722 pounds each, played a crucial role in generating vertical lift during takeoff and landing. It had a range of responsibilities, including fleet defense against surveillance aircraft, reconnaissance missions, and anti-ship strikes. However, despite its capabilities, it never saw combat action. In total, 231 Yak-38 aircraft were manufactured before production ceased in 1988 and eventually phased out of frontline service in 1993. Hawker Siddeley Harrier Hawker Siddeley Harrier was famous throughout the world as the first jet fighter capable of vertical takeoff and landing and the only truly successful design of that era. It served as a ground attack and reconnaissance plane in the close air support role for the Royal Air Force. The Harrier's power was a single Pegasus turbofan engine, cleverly positioned within the fuselage. The engine featured two air intakes and four vectoring nozzles, allowing precise control over the thrust produced. Two nozzles were dedicated to the bypass flow, while the other two directed the jet exhaust. Additionally, Several reaction nozzles were strategically placed in the nose, tail, and wingtips to ensure stability during vertical flight. The engine's nozzles were capable of rotating downward for vertical lift or rearward for conventional forward flight. This unique attribute, known as thrust vectoring, granted the Harrier exceptional maneuverability and agility in the skies. During its active service, the Royal Air Force strategically deployed the majority of Harriers in West Germany to defend against potential invasions by the Warsaw Pact forces. The Harriers' distinct capabilities allowed the Royal Air Force to disperse its forces away from vulnerable air bases, ensuring a more effective defense strategy. In total, 278 Harrier aircraft were built, and they faithfully served until their retirement in 2006. Their impact on aviation history, both in terms of technical achievements and operational effectiveness, remains significant and widely recognized. Yakovlev Yak-141 The Yak-41 program was initiated in 1975, about the same time that the Yak-38 was first deployed. This supersonic aircraft, known as the Freestyle, was primarily designed for air defense, with a second rear role in attack missions. Its main engine was supported by four side-mounted ducts and a series of large louvers on the upper surface, enabling the engine to draw in air during powerful hovering maneuvers. The rear nozzle had an incredible range of motion, capable of rotating from 0 to 95 degrees for vertical takeoff, landing, and hovering. During in-flight testing, the Freestyle achieved a maximum speed of Mark 1.7, and its maneuverability was often touted as being on par with the renowned MiG-29 Fulcrum fighter. Originally, flight testing was planned to continue until 1995. However, 
the development faced an abrupt halt in August 1991 due to financial constraints caused by the shrinking Soviet military budget. Yakovlev attempted to fund the project independently, hoping to attract foreign investors. However, complications arose when the second flight prototype was destroyed in a hard landing on the Admiral Gorsk of aircraft carrier. The surviving prototype made an appearance at the Farnborough Air Show the following year. However, Yakovlev struggled to find a market for the design, ultimately leading to the discontinuation of the project. F-35B The F-35B is a variant of the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, which is a fifth-generation multi-role fighter aircraft. The F-35B is specifically designed for short takeoff and vertical landing operations, enabling it to operate from aircraft carriers, amphibious assault ships, and short runways. It utilizes the shaft drive and lift fan system, designed by Lockheed Martin, and developed by Rolls-Royce for its vertical takeoff and landing operations. The system includes a lift fan, drive shaft, roll posts, and a thrust vectoring 3B SM nozzle that redirects engine exhaust downward. By combining the thrust from the swivel nozzle with the lift generated by the fan, the F-35B achieves remarkable vertical flight capabilities. The lift fan is powered by the low-pressure turbine through a drive shaft, while roll control is achieved with wing-mounted thrust nozzles known as roll posts. These advanced features significantly enhance its maneuverability and adaptability in various operational scenarios. It can reach a top speed of approximately Mark 1.6 and has a maximum range exceeding 2,000 to 100 kilometers. When carrying internal weapons, its combat radius extends to around 850 kilometers. Its arsenal is impressive, with the capability to carry a diverse array of ordnance, including air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles, guided bombs, and a fearsome 25mm internal cannon. Dassault Mirage 3V The French Dassault Mirage 3V was developed in response to a NATO requirement for a supersonic vertical takeoff and landing fighter from the already successful Mirage 3 fighter line, but with a set of eight small turbofan engines in the fuselage to provide vertical lift. It holds the distinction of being the fastest recorded vertical takeoff aircraft, reaching an astonishing speed of Mark II. During vertical takeoffs and landings, these lift jets would have played a crucial role. However, they remained inactive while the aircraft operated in horizontal flight. However, the eight engines posed a challenge, leaving limited space for fuel. Unfortunately, this issue manifested in a distressing incident when a visiting US Air Force pilot had to eject due to fuel depletion during low speed and hover operations. The project raised intriguing possibilities, suggesting that any aircraft could be transformed into a VTOL platform with a sufficient number of lift engines. However, the obstacle lay in the lack of available space for other crucial components. It weighed approximately 3,000 pounds, sacrificing about half of its payload and fuel capacity. Only two prototypes were built, and when the second prototype was lost in an accident, the entire project was ended. Lockheed XFV The Lockheed XFV was an American experimental tail-sitter prototype aircraft built by Lockheed in the early 1950s to demonstrate the operation of a vertical takeoff and landing fighter for protecting convoys. This innovative aircraft utilized large aerodynamic surface for control during hover benefiting from the propeller slip stream that enveloped each surface. The distinctive shaped tail arrangement played a crucial role in minimizing downwash masking, ensuring optimal performance. To assume a vertical position, an erector trolley was employed, with small caster wheels on the tail tips for stability. Initially, it featured temporary conventional landing gear and undertook its inaugural horizontal flight in March 1954. 
Over the course of its development, a total of 27 conventional flights were successfully completed, including the first full transitions above 1,000 feet. However, the XFV faced significant challenges when it came to control during hover. The pilot grappled with the limited control authority, making it difficult to gauge crucial elements such as sync, climb, and rotation based on standard visual cues. Regrettably, no attempts were made to execute vertical takeoffs or landings, ultimately leading to the program's ultimate failure. EWR VJ101 The EWR VJ101 was an experimental German jet fighter vertical takeoff and landing tilt jet aircraft. It was one of the early designs that held the potential for achieving Mark II flight. In the 1950s, as several nations expressed interest in developing aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing, the German federal government requested their recently revitalized aviation industry to explore potential designs for such aircraft. The X-1 was equipped with a unique configuration of six RB-145 engines. Two engines were vertically mounted in the fuselage to provide lift while four engines were housed in wing swiveling nacelles, each capable of generating 2,750 pounds of thrust. Notably, successful tests were conducted using a cloth skin to simulate the fuselage and wings, showcasing satisfactory control under various weather conditions and seasons, but it was cancelled after one flying prototype was built. Dornier Du-31 The Dornier Du-31 was an experimental vertical takeoff and landing jet-propelled transport aircraft designed and produced by West German aircraft manufacturer Dornier. The development of the Du-31 was motivated principally by the heavy interest expressed by the German Air Force in the acquisition of short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft capable of carrying huge cargo. Such ambitions received a further boost from the issuing of NATO, which called for a vertical takeoff and landing capable tactical support aircraft that would be operated in conjunction with the EW of VJ 101. A total of three aircraft, two flight capable and one static airframe, were constructed and used for testing. To achieve optimal performance, the Du 31 incorporated engines mounted in underwing nacelles resembling modern turbofans. Notably, each underwing Pegasus engine was equipped with two inboard and two outboard rotatable nozzles, providing precise control during flight. During the vertical flight, the Du-31 relied on its two wing-mounted engines, which worked together to suspend the aircraft in the air. LTVX C-142 the Ling Temkovout XC-142 was an experimental tilt-wing aircraft designed to explore the capabilities of vertical and short takeoff and landing transports. It successfully demonstrated its ability to transition between vertical and forward flight, but the program faced a lack of interest from its sponsors, leading to its termination. The XC-142 had a tilting wing that allowed for hovering in a tailwind, and its tail rotor could fold to reduce stowage length. Despite a proposal for a production version, the C-142B, the Tri-Services management team couldn't establish a requirement for a VTOL transport, and the project ended. The remaining aircraft were transferred to NASA for further research testing. McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II The McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II is a second-generation vertical and short takeoff and landing ground attack aircraft. It is an evolution of the original British Harrier jump jet developed by Hawker Siddeley in the 1960s. It was developed and manufactured by McDonnell Douglas for the United States Marine Corps and other international customers. It features several significant improvements over its predecessor, 
including increased payload capacity, improved avionics, and more powerful engines. It utilizes thrust vectoring technology, which allows the aircraft to transition between vertical and horizontal flight modes by redirecting the engine exhaust downward for vertical takeoff and landing, and rearward for conventional forward flight. The aircraft has a single-seat cockpit and a distinctive appearance with its forward-swept wings and upward-canted exhaust nozzles. It is primarily designed for close air support and attack missions, capable of delivering a wide range of ordnance, including air-to-ground missiles, guided bombs, and rockets. It can operate from small ships, austere airfields, and forward operating bases, providing close air support to ground forces in a variety of environments. It has been involved in numerous conflicts and operations, including the Gulf War, Operation Enduring Freedom, and Operation Eerborki Freedom. As always, thank you for watching. You can give us a video suggestion by commenting in the comment section for a video you would wish us to create, and if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and watch more by clicking on the end screens on the video.